this video, we'll examine the influence of the stress path to failure on the soil's shear strength. The practicing geotechnical engineer must frequently determine the level of safety of an existing or planned earth structure. This is typically done by calculating the ratio of the average shear stress applied by the structure divided by the average shear strength. This ratio is known as the factor of safety. The determination of the average shear stress for a given loading geometry presents no difficulty. However, the determination of the appropriate strength can prove challenging. In our last video, we introduced the shear box test as a means of measuring soil strength. We will now use the shear box test to demonstrate that the behaviour of soil depends not only on the initial in situ and final states, but also on the route taken between these states. These routes are referred to as stress paths and may be plotted as either effective stresses or total stresses. Let's portray three shear box tests on dry sand. We're obviously dealing with effective stresses in this case, but note that this is not a precondition. In our first test, we will apply an initial normal stress and then increase this as the sample is sheared. This gives us the following trajectory with failure occurring when the stress path reaches the failure envelope, giving a shear strength tau L for loading. If we start the second test at the same initial normal effect of stress, but unloading or reducing it as the specimen is sheared, this gives us the following stress path. This time, failure occurs at a shear strength of tau u for unloading. Note, we get two different shear strengths based solely on the path taken to failure. Incidentally, conventional direct shear or shear box tests involve keeping the normal stress constant. In such a test, starting again at the same normal effective stress, gives us the following stress path and a failure shear strength of tau c. It's worth noting here that our conventional stability analysis assumes a vertical stress path to failure. And while this is convenient and simplifies our analysis, in reality the average effect of normal stress in the ground almost never remains constant during shearing. Another interesting insight can be observed by conducting a simple laboratory experiment. Consider the following setup having a small foundation resting on a submerged sand. The sand is subjected to an increase in pore water pressure by filling the standpipe with water. At a certain height of water, the change in pore water pressure, delta U, will exceed the total stress, the effective stress will equal zero, and the soil will fail, sending the foundation into the abyss. Plotting the stress path for this scenario and starting from the in situ stress condition for the element shown, we see the stress path to failure is now horizontal, as the pore water pressure is the only thing being changed in this test. The figure also shows the conventional vertical and loading effect of stress paths to failure. This experiment can also be used to explain why slopes often fail after periods of heavy rainfall. We hear, particularly in the media, reference being made to the heavy rainfall being responsible for lubricating the soil, causing the slope to fail. Of course, the geotechnical engineer knows that the real reason for the failure is an increase in pore water pressure that leads to a reduction in soil strength. This comes about as the pore water pressure increases, the total stress remains constant, and thus the effect of stress is no longer sufficient to support the self-weight of the slope. For now, it is suffice to say that stress path sketching is a very useful tool for guiding the selection of appropriate strength tests to be performed when designing complex or non-standard geotechnical structures, such as those classified under Geotechnical Category 3 in Eurocode 7. To conclude, we've seen the path to failure influences the governing shear strength of soil. So a thorough understanding and ability to draw stress paths is an important skill. 
You should note that the stress paths can also be plotted using different axes depending on the field loading conditions. But this is a topic for another day. Click here to continue with the next video.